Hi, uh, my name is Juni Wasaki. I'm the concert master of the Asheville Symphony, and we're so happy to have James Ennis here back with us. I think this might be your third time since I've been in this orchestra that you've played with us. I yeah, at least numbers mixed I, up. I know. Yeah, it's and uh, and before you were here, I was I was here a bunch of times as well. So uh, yeah, it, it feels very very familiar, and it's awfully nice to to be back every time. It's great to always have. Um, soloists come back because we get to know them as an orchestra and James and I actually have been lucky enough to play other things as well throughout the yeah. season um, especially in the summer where he is the music director artistic director of the Seattle Chamber Music Society and um, but we're so happy to have you here to play Beethoven this time I think last time was Britain yep that's right and just so about a year ago we're getting through all the B's <laughs> <laughs> yeah we're making our way up yeah. alphabetically right yeah. what's next um, Brooke Brahms yeah. Oh, there's a lot of B composers. Yeah. Yeah. But um, I guess maybe somewhat what something that a lot of people might want to know is maybe when was the first time you performed the Beethoven? I was uh, pretty lucky to have a chance to play the Beethoven, like perform it with orchestra when I was quite young. I think I was about 16. Uh, you know, usually this is a piece that's sort of reserved for. I was, I was the just elder about, statesman, yeah, right? I was about to say that. I, it was one of those pieces that I stayed away from for a while, just yeah. because I was told these myths of, you're not ready, you're not ready, right, you're not right. ready. Yeah, you know, I, I had this conductor that um, gave me a lot, of, uh, a lot of my first opportunities, this wonderful man uh, named Victor Feldbrill, who was the music director at that point of the Hamilton Philharmonic in Hamilton, Ontario. And, um, I mean, we met when I was probably about 15 or so and he hired me it's funny the thing of B composers I did my first Brook with him my first Brahms and my first Beethoven and uh, that was you know I I felt like the concerts went well I mean who knows in retrospect <laughs> it's like maybe they showed uh, you know great immaturity who's to say but it was an introduction to uh, to playing these pieces because yeah they can be built up as you know, these Everests of the literature mm -hmm. pieces like Brahms and Beethoven in particular, to the point where it almost becomes like psychologically damaging. And I don't really think it's it's so uh, it's so helpful because you you can really only so much of that that learning process can only happen through experience. And then having had the chance to play it. Um, at that young age, then it was a piece that was already like in my repertoire. So then people Just would nice. say, oh, have you played the Beethoven? Oh, yes, I played the Beethoven. So then it became more and more mm -hmm. and more Beethoven. So actually, it's probably, at this point, it's probably the concerto I've played the most of any. Wow. Uh, and and it's always interesting. You go to a new place and, and it takes on a slightly different life. It's a, a piece with a fair amount of flexibility to it. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like, yeah. It's a piece where I think you can have a very clear concept of the big shape and the overall structure and what you're trying to say, but even within that, there's so much room for, you know, the, the corners can go a little mm. differently depending on who you're playing with, depending on the hall, depending on the night. Every, yeah, every night it's a little, it might be a little different, and that, but that's, that's what makes it fun. Um, you know, but it, is it my understanding that even with your extensive discography, you kind of waited to record this piece. Well, you know, it's... It was always the one that, that was missing yeah. in the collection of CDs. <laughs> well, that recording that I did make, it came out, I guess, about a year ago. And it was one of those things that was not so much by design mm -hmm. as by circumstance. Okay. Um, in that, with certainly with a piece like like the Beethoven, you want to make sure you you're really careful to get it right, or at least as close to right as as you can. And we have four um, chances this weekend. So <laughs> yeah. Good. Well, with this um, with the recording, I think that uh, it was it was finding the opportunity that felt like the right one. Mm -hmm. And interestingly, it, it happened with. You know, we were talking just a minute ago about how this is an orchestra that I've really gotten to know right. and, and you develop that sort of rapport with musicians and that sort of uh, sixth sense of flexibility and, and all that and uh, 
the orchestra that I ended up recording it with is the Royal Liverpool Phil, mm -hmm. who's an orchestra where I've been their sort of artist in residence and I've worked with them for years and years. I'd actually played the Beethoven with them before. The concertmaster, who's actually no longer there but was there for the recording, we had played it together with, I think, three different orchestras. Oh my and gosh. So it was one of those things where um, w w there was kind of this shared history there. And, uh, and I, I feel like that really helped and I felt like today in rehearsal there was something really nice about playing with people that I know and mm -hmm. have this comfort level with you know with you and Giancarlo and so many other members of the orchestra yeah. so obviously we're in the beginning of the playoff season for baseball <laughs> yeah and for for many of people that may not know James is one of the m biggest baseball fanatics that I've ever met which I enjoy talking to him about because I love sports as well how do you handle playing a concert when maybe your team is playing on the same <laughs> night? Well, it's funny having been here exactly <laughs> a year, year ago, yeah. and uh, and as you know, I mean, we were kind of rushing off stage, getting mm -hmm. <laughs> getting updates and watching on our phones. And uh, have you ever caught yourself thinking about the game during a concert? <laughs> in rehearsals, sometimes my <laughs> mind will wander a bit, but no, you know, in in the concerts, it. Um, I will admit. To, um, to a superstition. This is, I, I mean, I think of myself as a real practical person, mm -hmm. and you know, I'm not into a lot of the sort of hocus pocus stuff that many musicians are. But that being said, during baseball playoffs, if I'm playing really well, sometimes in between movements, I'm like, well, surely my team won't let me down because I'm playing so well for them. <laughs> Um, yeah, I think that, that sports is probably the area where I am least clear-minded, and um, and hopefully music is the area where I'm most clear-minded. Yeah, so. yeah. <laughs> well, we're glad that you're here to play violin and not baseball. Because yeah, that, that's I, best for sure, everyone, yeah, definitely. I think we're definitely. all in safe hands. <laughs> well, thank you for being here, and we look forward to performing all the concerts with yeah, you. Yeah, I hope you enjoy it. <laughs>